Lightroom's lens blur tool is an absolute game changer. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to use it to create better photos coming up. So in this video, I'm gonna be using this photo to be using this lens blur tool. And that brings up a good question. Which photos work best with this tool and which photos do not? So which photos work best is a photo that's pretty much entirely in focus. You can see that even though there's a little blurring down in the foreground and in the background, really what you want is a lots of focus in these photos because what Lightroom is doing here is using AI to determine what the subject of the photo actually is, where the foreground is, and where the background is. So you need that obvious subject, you need that obvious foreground, and you also need that obvious background in these photos. Now photos that are already blurred out a lot in the foreground and the background don't really work all that well in these because this tool is used to make blurring in the background and foreground. So if you already have those in the photo, you don't really need this tool that much. But if you have a photo that's pretty much in focus, throughout the entire thing, this is a great tool to use for more blur in your background. This tool actually benefits those most who can't afford those highly expensive lenses. If you've ever been on a safari or you've gone out to photograph wildlife, you know that you need a really wide aperture, fast lens, something like f4 or even wider. So if you don't have a lens like that, maybe you're shooting at f5.6 to 6.7 in that range is your widest aperture and you can't get a lot of defocusing or blurring in your background, this is a great tool for you. Now, why do I love this tool? It's because Lightroom has basically given the blurring effect to people who can't afford those highly expensive lenses. That's breaking down a barrier to allow people to create the photos that they dream of and want to create, and I'm all about that. Now, obviously, it's better to get that nice sharp focus on your subject and blurring in the background in camera with an actual lens, but this tool is a great second option. So if you scroll down in your develop module all the way to this lens blurring option, if you don't have this yet, don't worry, it's gonna be rolling out to everyone very soon. So all you have to do for the lens blur option is hit the apply check mark. When you hit apply, what it does is it analyzes that photo, find your subject, your foreground, and your background, and basically gives you a range of depth within your photo. Let's look at that right now. So you have a focal range grid right here in this window. What this represents are the different subjects. You see this on the far left is going to be your foregrounds, and the middle is going to be your main subject, and on the far right is your background. If you can't see this well enough and you can't visualize this, it does give you a good visualization tool. So if you click visualize depth right here, it'll give you a color representation of where those things actually are. So you see your background in the purple is represented in purple in this photo, your subject is orange and your far foreground is this lightest area of yellow. I think that's a huge benefit if you're not able to visualize these things, having this grid and these color representations helps out a ton even in the next steps. So I'm just gonna de-click that and I'm going to increase my blur amount in this to a pretty significant amount. Now I'm going all the way up here to 94 and you have different options of what's called bokeh. Now, if you don't know what bokeh is, it's basically how much blurring you have in the background or in the foreground away from your subject. It's just that nice blurring effect outside of your subject matter. Now, what's cool about this is they give you different options. So you have modern circular lens, which is just gonna be any modern lens made in the last 10 years. They have a bubble standard circular shape with overcorrected. You have a five blade, which is gonna be like your classic film lens. They have a ring lens, which is commonly seen in reflex or mirror lenses. And then they have a cat eye version. Now you can click through all of these and see how they represent the photo. They're not gonna change it a ton, but it might put a cool effect on the photo, so it's worth clicking through these. I've always kept it on this nice standard one that they come with, and you can also boost this effect if you want to. It's good just to keep around 50 though in that mid-tone. Now, how do you affect how much in the background is blurred versus in the foreground? Let's look at that next. So you can come down to this graph and actually adjust it where you are getting more depth in your foreground or in your background. So if I pull this all the way to the right, you can see that it basically makes the background pretty in focus. If I pull this down to where it's just on my subjects, it blurs out that entire background for me. It also cleans up a lot of image noise, which is really unexpected and a very nice touch too when you're pairing that with something like their denoise tool. 
Now it's important to scroll around your subjects because you might get little areas like this that are still in focus that need to be out of focus. What you can do to actually refine that is click on this down arrow here that says refine. When you click on that, you can either select focus or blur. Since this is getting in focus areas that are beyond the elephant's back, I'm gonna hit blur and I'm gonna come in here with a brush and just paint that blur in right along the elephant's back. Now I'm doing this very roughly for this video's sake. You can refine that to an exact amount if you want to. You can also get fine adjustments using like the amount that this is set at, the size of the brush, the feathering amount on the brush, and the flow of your paint strokes. You can also paint in focus areas, and it's a good idea just to scroll around here because there are obviously some blurring spots right here too that I would just come in and paint out. And again, I'm doing this very roughly for video sake so you can see how to do it. But if you find any areas that should be out of focus, that are in focus, you can just paint those in. Now it did a great job getting the elephants actually in focus, so I'm not gonna do anything with the focus, just know that you can use that tool exactly the same. It's if it's out of focus where it should be in focus, just paint it in with the focus tool. Now you shouldn't go too far with this. If I just come in right on the elephant's face, which is where the most focus should be, and pull this down into the subject matter, you can see that the subject is actually getting blurred out. You can always use this visualize depth tool to see where that is, but I always scroll down to where they're out of focus and then I pull it back up gently to where just their outline is in focus, just right around there. And if you zoom in, you can really visualize that very well. Now to see what we've done here with this tool, what I'm gonna do is zoom in on the elephants themselves and actually just look at how this has blurred this in. So I'm gonna make this pretty big and then I'm gonna check the apply button to undo the lens blur effect and then I'm going to check it again so you can see it in, out, in. So this has done a great job of just blurring out that background and giving you more bokeh effect in the back and in the foreground of your photos. Here's where this tool does not work well. So here's a photo of a bird, a white egret in the morning, and I'm just gonna bring this in, crop it in and zoom in. And what I'm gonna do is scroll down, go back to my lens blur tool, and I'm gonna hit apply on lens blur. Now when I do that, it does find the subject matter really well, as you can see down here in the graph, but there's just not enough there in terms of background, in focus areas, foreground for this to use. So if you have those really close zoomed in photos on wildlife, this isn't going to work very well. This is more for those wider scenes. So even if I pull in my blur amount a lot, you're not seeing a big change in this. If I zoom in on the bird's face, and actually pull this blurring in, you can see that it starts to get in here on the actual feathers and on the tip of the beak, which brings that out of focus, which is what you don't want. That's why this is secluded to those photos like the elephants that I was showing you a little bit earlier. If you like this video, here's some more Lightroom tools and tutorials that you can use to make your photos that much better.